Hey everyone, my name is Brandon Graisley. I'm a high school math teacher. We're going to learn about tree diagrams. They are a useful way to represent situations where we have a series of stages, like a series of choices. So in the diagram here, this is a tree diagram that starts on the left hand side and you have to make a choice. So these are called branches. We branch either to phone A or phone B. Maybe you're making a purchase. And then once you get to one of these uh, nodes or spots here, you have another choice to make. So this is the second set of branches. This one branches in three ways to choose a cell phone plan, one, two, or three. And you'll notice when you look at the tree as a whole, you can see that the three plans here are available for phone A and they're also available for phone B. You could imagine a case where uh, maybe one of the phones has additional features and so there's another kind of plan available for it, but not for the first phone. When you look at the right hand side, these gray um, sort of end points, the last nodes in the tree, you can count those to see how many unique pathways there are through the tree or different sequences. So choosing phone A and then choosing plan two results in one path and there are six in total for this, uh, for this tree and for this situation. So I have four practice questions that I'm gonna work through with you. Uh, I would suggest if you're watching this video to pause and go and try these on your own first and then come back and I'm gonna do them in order so you can come back and watch number one maybe before you go on to two, for example. Okay, so I've listed out the different things we need to think about on the left-hand side here. So we're gonna have a tree that once again has two stages. You have to choose a color and a model, or I suppose you could choose a model and then a color. So let's start off with choosing a color first. So I'm gonna use this as my starting point and I'm gonna draw four branches, one for each color. And I'll write them out here. I can choose the color red or green or blue or black. Now it's not essential that these go from left to right, but it's nice to be consistent. Uh, this is typically how we read them. Next, once we've chosen our color, for example, red, we then have to choose a type of vehicle or model. So this is truck, car, or SUV. So once again, three choices to make. Truck, car, or SUV. And if we had instead chosen the color green, we still have the same three choices. So this looks a lot like that cell phone and cell phone plan example where we have three choices after we choose our color. And it's consistent all the way down here. Okay, so let's go ahead and count how many different options in total we have. So a red truck is one option, a red car, a red SUV, we're up to three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. And there are 12 total um, permutations or different sequences of uh, color than model or different kinds of vehicles we can get. Okay, let's look at our second question. A coin is flipped three times how many different sequences of heads and tails are possible? And then a second part, how many sequences have exactly one heads or head? So we have to flip three times. So one way to think about this is to flip once and see what the different options are. And there are two options, heads or tails. That's the first sort of, I'm gonna put air quotes around the word choice here. You're making a choice between heads or tails or these are the two things that can happen. Now, if the first one was heads, you still can have heads or tails. So it splits into two again. If you had started with tails, you also get heads and tails as two options. That's one stage, two stages, and the third stage looks the same. Uh, heads, tails, and so on. And it looks like there are a total of eight different sequences. Now the second part of the question was how many of these sequences have only one heads in them? And I'm gonna just change colors here. Let's go like this and try to identify the ones that have a single heads. Now if I follow 
heads, 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 that's no good. In fact, if I start with heads here, if I follow this first choice like that, then I must follow this pathway here, tails followed by tails. So heads, tails, tails matches the uh, what we're looking for. Let's grab another color. If I start with tails like this, then I need one heads somewhere. That can be here, but then I would need to follow it with a tails. So that would be tails, heads, tails. Or I suppose if I started with tails, I could get another tails, but I have to finish with heads so that I get one exactly. And there we go. So it looks like there are three total uh, um, pathways that will give us a single heads along with two tails. Third question, binary numbers use only the digits 0 and 1. For example, 1001, 0001, and 1111. Those are all binary numbers. So how many different four-digit binary numbers are there? So those are some examples. Well, we could try to make a list, and that would, we would be successful making that list. It's not super complicated, but we're going to use a tree so that it is organized. And the way I'll think about this is by each of my columns, or, or each choice I make, is choosing a digit. So first, for example, I can choose either a 0 or a 1 to start. You can begin with zeros. Let's say I've chosen 0 as my first digit. I can then choose from 0 or 1 for my second digit. Similarly, if I'd chosen 1 first, I can have 0 or 1 for my second digit. And I'm just going to kind of build my numbers at the bottom here. This is the first digit. This is the second digit. That's what my choices are here. Then we have another set of choices to make. That's the third digit. Since we're making four digit numbers, oops. we need one more column for our last set of choices. I'm going to have to really squish this in here. Oops, that should be a one. Should have left myself a little more space. Not my best work. Whew, okay, so now let's see. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16 different sequences. Okay, final question. When making a sandwich, you have the following ingredients available. Whole wheat bread, ham, cheese, mustard, and hummus. How many different sandwiches could you make? You don't need to use all the ingredients on each sandwich. Okay, so we're going to have a potential argument here, but I'm going to make an executive decision. Sandwiches start with bread, so all the sandwiches have to have bread, uh, but the other ingredients are kind of optional. And I'm going to make one more um, rule as well, is that just bread is not a sandwich. So you have to have one of these things, ham, cheese, mustard, and hummus at least, in order to have uh, a complete sandwich. So let's go look at how to draw this with a tree. So first we're not going to include the bread because it's not necessary. If you wanted to, you could sort of draw a horizontal line and write bread and then another horizontal line. Not exactly a branching tree at that point. Uh, so let's start with the first item, which was ham. So rather than writing the word ham inside of my tree, I'm actually gonna make a column for ham. And the, inside the tree, I'm going to write the word yes if I'm going to include ham and no if I'm not including ham. So the choice is whether to put ham on the sandwich rather than uh, sort of like writing ham and hummus and cheese in a single stage. You're choosing whether to put ham in. So this is a little different than the previous examples. Uh, we also had cheese, mustard, and hummus. So we'll have a stage for cheese, a stage for mustard, and a stage for hummus. 
Okay, so do we include the cheese or not? So we can have yes or no for cheese. If you did pick ham, you can choose yes or no for cheese. If you didn't pick ham, you can still say yes or no to cheese. So following this path here, yes, yes. So far we have ham and cheese, or we could follow no to ham, yes to cheese, and so on. We need to do the same thing for mustard. And you'll notice this tree looks a lot like some of the ones we've done already, except it uses the words yes and no instead of like the binary one was uh, zeros and ones. Okay, that was a lot of drawing, and not the prettiest drawing I've ever done. Um, so if you count this up, you'll find a total of 16. But I want to draw your attention to one of those entries, because maybe we should exclude it. And it's this one right here along the bottom. If you don't pick ham, and you don't pick cheese, and you don't pick mustard, and you don't pick hummus, then you're just eating bread and not a sandwich. So I'm going to say instead that we have 16 different sandwiches but we're going to need to subtract one of those sandwiches and that will give us a final answer of 15 different sandwiches. Now we could even argue a little bit more saying if you put ham on the bottom of the sandwich and then cheese on top of the ham, maybe if you switch the order that would be a different sandwich, but choosing just the different ingredients already was pretty complicated for our tree. So that is a, uh, a quick rundown on a few examples of how you can use a tree to help solve some counting problems. If you have any questions, go ahead and ask. Thanks.